See, when I do an ultrasound or when the patient comes classically with the symptoms that we discussed and we suspect that she might have endometriosis, the first thing that we should do is check for her AMH levels. The AMH blood test will give me a stat information about her ovarian condition as to the number of follicles she has in her ovaries. This will help me decide as to how fast or how quickly do we need to get her pregnant. What does this mean? If the AMH levels are low for somebody, then she is essentially having very few eggs. In her case, we need to do an IVF or a fast track treatment to get her pregnant as soon as possible because she may not have eggs left for any long term therapy. Whereas if somebody has a lot of eggs, her AMH level is good, in that woman we can try to get her pregnant naturally as well if we can restore the anatomy or the normal shape and situation of the pelvis. So this is the first and the foremost guiding principle. We check the AMH levels and based on the AMH levels then we decide as to how fast or how quickly do we need to get her pregnant. The next step I would recommend is always to go for a laparoscopy. The laparoscopy will help us detect endometriosis and burn up the deposits if they can be seen and clear up the deposits. Sometimes with laparoscopy you can free up the ovary and the uterus, you can make the ovary come back to its normal position, you can check the status of the tubes, if there is scarring in the tubes, if there is bad collection in the pelvis and the uterus is all coiled up stuck somewhere then we know that she has a very little chance of getting pregnant naturally. On the other hand if there is some additions, some collection but that can be cleaned up then at least for the next few cycles she has a decent chance of trying to get pregnant on her own. So once the laparoscopy is carried out and we think that the tubo ovarian relationship meaning the tube and the ovaries can come close to each other and the egg can be picked up by the tube is decent enough then we try and get her pregnant through what is known as ovarian stimulation and intrauterine insemination. In ovarian stimulation and intrauterine insemination, we give her medications, tablets and injections, uh, tablets or injections, make her produce more than one egg so the theoretical chance of the egg getting picked up by the tube is higher and when the eggs are ready instead of having a sexual contact deposit the semen in the womb. A lot of studies have shown that this gives her a higher chance of getting a pregnancy as opposed to a natural contact me method. If this has been tried for a couple of cycles and there is no pregnancy then we recommend that she should go for an IVF treatment. On the other hand if the laparoscopy suggests that things are badly scarred, they are all stuck badly and they cannot be freed up, then there is no point wasting time trying naturally and we should move for an IVF immediately. We also need to understand that the first laparoscopy is the best laparoscopy. If somebody has undergone a laparoscopy treatment some time back and she still hasn't gotten pregnant, chances are a second laparoscopy still will not work for her. So for such kind of women, it's better to go for an IVF rather than go suggest a second laparoscopy. Ovarian cystectomy, that is remo removing the blood that's collected in the ovary, is usually not recommended by us because while removing this blood, we also take away some part of the healthy ovarian tissue that reduces her ovarian reserve. Rather, what we say is to open up the cyst and drain the liquid that's collected rather than removing the cyst because that might still help us preserve some of the healthy ovarian tissue. <music>